I'll show you how to use paper clay to create the look of individual bricks without using any special tools. I'll demonstrate how to use cheap acrylic paint for achieving a variety of looks whether you'd like brand new bricks or abandoned. There is so much ground to cover so let's get started. I'm making my bricks for this wooden wall but the moisture in the paper clay will warp it so I'll be making the bricks on some wax paper and then gluing them onto the wall later. I taped the wax paper down to my surface to begin. I'm using creative paper clay and I'll leave a link below as well as a video showing how to make your own paper clay. Creative paper clay is an air dry clay with minimal shrinkage. I don't need all of this clay so I used some thin wire to cut the block in half. Since this is air dry clay the extra clay will dry out so I wrap mine in some damp paper towel and plastic wrap and put it in a sealed container. I'll be making 112 scale brick, so now I'm just rolling my clay to my desired thickness. Paper clay isn't very sticky, but I do still like to rotate it every now and then as extra insurance. I'm using a piece of PVC pipe for rolling the clay. I'm rolling my clay to be a little less than a quarter inch thick, and I'm just eyeballing it, but if you'd like to be precise, you can tape some quarter inch sticks to your desk and run your roller across them. The sticks keep your roller exactly at the height you would like and make sure that the piece of clay is the same depth the whole way across. Once my clay is rolled out, I slide the wall underneath it and cut it to size. You could also use a paper template. I like to trim the clay with the back side of the craft knife, so not the side that's sharp. How you decide to cut your clay will depend on your wall, but since mine has a window in the middle, I use the back side of my craft knife again to cut out the window shape. To make my wall longer, I'm using the piece I'm cutting out of the window. First, I put a little bit of water on the join, then flatten the window shape and press it into place. Since it's so easy to patch in extra pieces, it makes this clay really foolproof to work with. To start the brick pattern, I am marking my clay at one quarter of an inch. For this step, I used the back of the knife to mark along the entire left side of the wall, and then I did the same thing on the right side of the wall. Then I used my ruler in the back side of my knife to connect the dots I made on the left side and the right side. These lines represent quarter inch tall bricks, which are standard bricks in 112 scale. If you are making bricks in a different scale, you'll choose different measurements, but the techniques I'm showing you will be the same. You can use crumpled aluminum foil for texture, and you should actually do this before you cut the lines so they don't get flattened. To make the vertical lines in the brick, you can use the back of your X-Acto knife to pull straight down. It leaves this little pull defect, so you can get rid of it by going across horizontally. Fixing all the pulls from the X-Acto knife can be a little tedious, so instead I'm making a very simple tool for creating my vertical lines. I cut the rounded end off of a popsicle stick and made it a quarter inch wide, which is the same height as my bricks. Then I tapered the end with my X-Acto knife and removed the point with my emery board. 112 scale bricks are 3 quarters of an inch wide, so I use my stick to mark 3 quarters of an inch across. You can use the horizontal method for marking all your bricks, but you could alternately use one of the guidelines in a ruler to go down. With the vertical method for marking bricks, you line up the ruler with one of the 3 quarter inch wide lines. Then skipping every other line, you use your stick to mark the bricks. I skipped every other line because the brick pattern I'm making is staggered and they're not directly on top of one another. Once you get an eye for it, you can ditch the ruler altogether and just eyeball your bricks after making just a couple guidelines. There are also brick and stone rollers where you can roll the pattern into your clay. You can either buy these rollers or print one at home with a 3D printer. Mistakes are easy to fix with a damp fingertip in your stick. Now I'll show you how to use basic tools to make these uniform bricks look individually laid and give them a lot of character. 
To make it look like pieces of the brick have fallen off the face, I'm using the back of my craft knife to lift away areas of the wet clay. And then I used my knife to cut away the corner of this brick. To make it look like some bricks have fallen out, you can simply take your knife and cut out individual sections of brick. You can hang on to the extra bits of brick and let them dry so you can scatter them later like their debris. One of my favorite ways of making the brick look like some are set back further than the others is to take the edge of my knife and cut a small layer off the front of the brick. You can use the stick to redefine the grout lines. Then I get a little water on my finger and use the piece of brick I just removed and press it onto another brick to make it look like it's sticking out further on the wall. For more dimension in the wall, you can create the look of crooked bricks by inserting your knife at a shallow angle. Then I attached the angled slice to the face of another brick. You can use either water or glue to attach the clay to itself while it's still wet. You can also glue the wet clay directly to surfaces and it'll dry and hold tight. Check out pictures of real old brick walls and imitate what you see. Here I'm using a toothpick to make two holes in the face of this brick. I don't know what they're for, but I like the look. You can also use your toothpick for making some holes or scratches in the surface of the brick. Experiment and get creative during this process because if you do something you don't like, the paper clay can be restored to its former look really easily. You can also use your knife to remove large chunks of brick, which is a really fun place to hide some flocking later. Now I'm using my stick to scoop some clay right off the surface. As I work, I rescue the scraps of clay I removed from the brick wall and add it to my sealed container to use it later. I used a variety of tools and techniques and spent about 30 minutes aging this wall. Whether you'd like plain bricks or really rustic bricks is an important step you don't want to miss if you want to give a realistic look of individually laid bricks. Using the stick tool along the edges, make a small indent where the bricks meet. If you feel like you're finished aging your brick, you could glue it to whatever surface you would like to use if you think it won't warp from the wet clay. I covered my clay with a slightly damp paper towel and left it overnight. Now it's the next morning and the clay has been drying for about 12 hours and you can see the edges are white where it's drying. The damp paper towel kept the face of the clay from drying so I can still repeat any of the techniques I used yesterday. The individual bricks I cut out are completely dry. Before I let my bricks dry completely, I performed one more technique where I inserted the stick in between the bricks, twisted the stick left to right, and created a gap. I did this all over the wall to varying degrees so the bricks would look even older and this is a great place to catch some flocking later. At this point I allowed the clay to dry for 24 hours without a paper towel covering it. Before I turn my work lights on, I wanted to show you the dimension that was created by cutting the clay off the face of some of the bricks and gluing it on other areas. At this point, my clay wasn't entirely dry, as you can see from the dark spots on the back, but I felt like it was time to glue it to the surface. I was a little worried the remaining moisture in the clay, along with the water-based glue, would warp the wall, but it ultimately doesn't. You can also wait until the clay is entirely dry before you glue it to your surface. If you're attaching the clay to a curved surface, you can do it while it's completely wet or while it's only partially dry and still flexible. I added too much glue because I was having too much fun making a wavy pattern, so I used a popsicle stick to remove some excess to try to reduce the odds of warping. I added some weights to my wall as a little extra insurance to prevent warping. The bricks and the texture I made were dry enough that they weren't affected by the heavy weights I added. I allowed it to dry overnight, and now it's time to start painting. First, I apply a base coat of whatever my desired grout color is. 
I apply a generous amount of paint and then I turn my brush vertically to make sure it gets into all the lines. You could also use spray primer or an airbrush. If you don't use enough paint, the white paint will sit on the surface of the bricks and it won't get into the grout lines. With the grout color done, I mix one part yellow ochre in red to two parts raw umber. You can test the color of your mixed paint on any dry bricks or scrap clay you have lying around. Now I'll show you some options for applying the paint while retaining the grout lines, starting with the paintbrush method. With a small amount of paint and a flat brush, I'm hitting the bricks from multiple directions. This method leaves white spots on the bricks and you can either fill them in with a brush or you can just leave them. The more texture and dimension you create, the less coverage you'll get with dry brushing. For the second method, I'm using a folded paper towel. This method also misses a lot of the texture we created. You may be tempted to eliminate texture, but it ends up making the bricks look a lot more realistic later. The third method is my favorite and the one I use. I got this synthetic sea sponge from the Dollar Tree in the bath section. When I apply the paint, I press the sponge into the bricks to fill in as much texture as I can while keeping the grout lines nice and clean. You can still use a brush to fill in white sections later, or you can leave them if you're covering a really large surface and you'd like to do this more quickly. To fill the holes, I put a little bit of paint on a toothpick. I'll leave a section of the wall with just the white grout lines and sponge painted brick and compare it in the end to the other sections I'll perform more steps on. I finished the base coat by painting the edges of any exposed brick so they'll look more three-dimensional and realistic. To make the brick look even more natural and varied, I like to mix up a couple more paint colors. By painting random bricks different tones, this is a cheap trick for creating a lot more interest in your wall. When I'm creating these colors, I don't even clean my brush and I'll often just add paint to the color I just mixed to change the tone. You can paint the entire accent brick or just lightly hit some of it. Using two or three different colors for your accent bricks is a good place to start. Then I'll go in with a much lighter tone and heavily dry brush a few of the bricks and then do a light dry brushing over the entire brick wall. Now it's time for some black wash. I make mine very simply by just thinning out some black acrylic paint. As with every step, you have options. Here I applied the black wash in just a small section and got it into the grout and then wiped away the excess before it dried. For this section, I'm applying the wash to the face of the bricks and avoiding the grout lines. I didn't remove the excess and allowed it to dry inside of the texture of the face of the brick. Washes emphasize texture and you'll get a different look depending on the color you apply, how you apply it, and if you wipe away the excess. You can tone down your wash and emphasize more texture by dry brushing a lighter coat over it. To make this really old dilapidated brick, I followed all of the steps I showed you and covered the entire thing with a black wash. I removed the excess with a paper towel. If your plan is to cover your entire wall in a black wash, you can skip the first step and apply just your base color to your bricks rather than a grout color. After the black wash dried, I applied some chalk pastels to create some more variation and a chalky finish like you see on old brick. Then I emphasized some of the finer details with an ivory dry brushing. To make the plaster walls around my brick, I mixed up some plaster according to the instructions and added a small amount of white glue. 
If you use too much glue, the plaster will crumble, but if you don't use enough, it may not stick to your substrate. I'll put some instructions in the description below if you'd like to understand the ratio I used. You can skip the plaster entirely, of course, by just covering your entire wall with paper clay brick. Once it dried for a couple minutes, I used the popsicle stick in my fingers to create some texture that'll show up later when I paint it. For the plaster on the left side of the wall, I applied some watered down brown paint. I used that same brown wash on some of the brick and I actually like it better than where I applied the black wash, so I'll keep that in mind for next time. This side is the black wash, the middle is the brown wash, and the side has no wash. And here's a close-up that shows the dried brown wash in the middle and the black on the left. For the right side of the wall, I used an even lighter brown wash, and for the bottom part of the wall, I used the lightest wash of all. When it dries, you can really see the difference between the varying intensities of wash. I'm showing you different examples so you can choose which one you'd like best. I finished off the plaster with some white dry brushing. I feel like this is every miniaturist's finishing move, but we're adding some flocking because it looks flocking awesome. You can use the glue and sprinkle method for this, but my favorite way to apply flocking to brick is to mix the flocking with a bit of glue and use my finger to smudge it onto the surface. The flocking simulates moss, and I really love how it rests in all of the details I added when I created these gaps with my stick. To enhance the mossy look, you can dry brush some green paint or add a green wash before you apply the moss. I used two types of flocking for the wall, a very vibrant color and a more muted tone. And then I mixed my two types of flocking together so it'll look more natural and added that to the wall as well. Here's what it looks like when the flocking dries. This bright section in the middle is the bit of the wall that I only sponge painted. I hope you learned some good tips and enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.